Good morning and welcome all. And it's a pleasure uh, to uh, now open the very first of Council's uh, standing committee meetings. And uh, today's meeting is uh, the infrastructure committee meeting. And of course, this is a, uh, a part of Council's reform uh, agenda in response to uh, the Belcara reforms and Council's commitment to providing uh, greater transparency to the community. Uh, so welcome to councillors, welcome to staff, and welcome to the media. Uh, for those people in the community who are watching uh, on live stream, uh, welcome to you also, and we hope you find uh, the meeting uh, of, uh, of value. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, <coughs> congratulate uh, the, uh, the Premier on uh, re-election of her government, and uh, also make uh, all councillors aware that our council will be uh, sending a letter. I'll be sending a letter off to the Premier uh, today, uh, congratulating her, and also to uh, Minister Hinchcliffe, um, who uh, we are hoping and expecting uh, will be returned uh, into the seat as Minister for Local Government. Uh, the government is looking at restructuring some of their departments over the coming days, so we will see some structural changes to the way in which uh, state government departments are formulated. Uh, and we'll keep everyone up to date as that happens. I'd also very importantly like to um, um, make you aware that we'll be also sending a, a letter to uh, our local member and a former leader of the opposition, uh, Deb Frecklington. As we all know, uh, Deb put her heart and soul into the campaign. And uh, unfortunately, you don't always win um, these things, um, but we're certainly going to acknowledge um, her and, uh, and also uh, indicate to her that we're very keen to continue to work with her as our local member to make sure that we can get some great outcomes for our region. I'm very sure that that, that will be able to happen. Um, so uh, that's just a, a information, some information uh, in opening. Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, I just wanted to, I'd like to uh, also uh, congratulate uh, CEO Mark and thank you for the work that you've done uh, in the Mr. CEO uh, in getting us to the point where we have got these committee meetings now functioning. Um, for those who aren't aware, our council is certainly leading the way in adopting uh, the government's Belcara reforms around greater transparency and accountability and uh, CEO Mark has been uh, very much at the forefront of making that happen. So thank you very much, Mr. CEO. Uh, do, I don't believe we have any uh, leave, uh, leaves of absence or apologies. Uh, so I'd now like to call on Councillor Duff to uh, provide the recognition of traditional owners. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to acknowledge country and the traditional owners of the land where we meet this morning, the Waka Waka people, and acknowledge the elders, both past, present, and emerging. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Do we have uh, any uh, declarations of conflict of interest in relation to the matters on the agenda today? Councillors? No? Very good, thank you. We'll move on then to item 5.1 on the agenda, which is the Infrastructure Standing Committee Terms of Reference. And I'm wondering, Mr CEO, if you wouldn't mind taking the lead. Thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, just, Councillors, when this went through the general, we were in the changeover of the... Um, of the regulations, so regulations came into effect on the 12th of October, our general was on the 14th. Uh, so we had, I had, well we, I use the word we, I had advised you that we would be uh, reviewing the numbering, so the numbering has, there were, they have changed the numbers and they didn't um, publish the regs until oh, probably Wednesday or Thursday of that week, so it wasn't possible to get it into the agenda. Um, so there's only been uh, no substantive change to what was adopted, so it is the same terms of reference. Uh, the numbering has been amended, uh, and this is put to you today for transparency, so that you're aware the numbering has been amended to reflect the new regulations. Uh, the terms of reference, uh, we'll put these at the beginning of each of the standing committees as we go this next week, so that they're received by the standing committee themselves. We've done a fair bit as far as looking at how to build the agendas uh, for these and then also the process for um, uh, doing the minutes and bringing the actions back. So um, with the portfolio reports being done this month at the standing committees, where the portfolio reports would be in the general meeting agenda, if there is an action item that comes out of, my example the other week, we're going to paint the toilets blue, uh, that action item will be dealt with where the portfolio report would be. So they'll be pulled out, put in the general meeting agenda as, as um, a, basically a brief report. 
uh, on those items. So by the time it gets to the general, as we said, we should have had a good opportunity to discuss it here. Um, with all these, they'll all be recorded and as well as um, um, transmitted. They'll be the recordings will be placed on YouTube. So the uh, live streams on the council webpage. The um, recording is then put on the YouTube channel uh, for anyone to watch and see. Each of these committees uh, that standing the terms of reference refers to council's already adopted policy, which I went through at the before, as far as the uh, acceptable request guidelines. The acceptable request guidelines, uh, the appendix has been added to the terms of reference for this meeting. Again, it will be for all the standing committees. It actually lists each of the sections and uh, the responsibilities under those sections. These aren't general meetings, so they don't have the broad scope of um, all, all facets of council business. So they will deal with the matters that are dealt with um, in the department. So it is based currently on the departmental structure. That will mean there will probably, if we continue, and again, this is the first two months of, of giving it a try and working some of the bugs out of it. Uh, and certainly, um, with building the agenda and changing some of the headings. Uh, Linnell's been doing an excellent job with that as far as, so this agenda's been built, I'll use the term manually, um, because before we make any formal changes to the template, we wanted to give it a bit of a run. So it is taking us a little bit longer. So the infrastructure one uh, deals with only the matters that are in the infrastructure department. So if we were to deal with um, Bunduma Homestead Building Maintenance, outside that is outside the terms of reference that would wait for the Community Standing Committee. So it wouldn't be dealt with at the Standing Committee. So we'll break it up along those lines. What that does mean is where we did try with the portfolio reports and Councillor Froloffs is the first one today. Uh, we tried, if you recall back all the way back at induction, and it seems so long ago when we were talking about portfolios and the Mayor was allocating portfolios, is trying to streamline the portfolios into at least one, um, no more than two departments per councillor. That, and again, when we presented the report at the general, one of the things that said before we disband the portfolio, well, not disband, probably the wrong word, but before we start to amend the portfolio structure, um, we'll give these a run for the two months and then we can have a conversation about that. But the waste services, the garbage services, sit outside of the terms of reference of the infrastructure department because it's spread over two departments. So the councillor's portfolio report today is on everything except waste in her portfolio. So when we get to the community, there will be a short portfolio report by the councillor on waste. So those sections will break up and start to break out across the standing committees. Um, and one of the things, it's a, it's a thought process that we would like you to give some consideration to. Is it possible to realign the um, portfolios? Should, should you wish to continue with this process? Is it possible to realign the portfolios so the portfolio reporting is then reflected of the departmental structure? Again, we talk ad infinitum about corporate plan and structure and strategy. As we settle into that new structure, while you're thinking about the corporate plan and that new structure, that would be an ideal time to look at the portfolios and say, okay, can we align them to whatever the structure may be without preempting uh, where that will go? Um, is it an ideal line opportunity to just start to realign and fine tune the portfolio so they line up with the standing committees? So um, it's food for thought and that's that's where it is today. Um, happy to take any questions, but we've, we've been through the standing committee uh, terms of references We'll, as we as we continue to run, we had, Linnell and I um, and others have gone through the regs. We're having a, it's an academic debate that I won't uh, I'll burden you with today about where the portfolio committee minutes actually go first. Um, once upon a time, you used to do your stand, oh no, portfolio, standing committee minutes, my apologies. Once upon a time, you used to do your standing committee um, minutes. They would go straight to the general, be endorsed. That was fine. The way they've written up the regulations now, the the conditions for since they've added the standing committee minutes back in as a as a must, um, it almost reads like they have to go back to the next standing committee. So that would give a delay of six weeks, two months on an action. That's why uh, this is the why. The actions will be dealt with separately. 
So the minutes when they go through will be just like any other advisory committee, basically they'll be just received the minutes, yes, tick, tick. Um, but if there's an action, we're going to paint the clubhouse blue, that action will be pulled out and go to the next general meeting. So the actions will be dealt with in a timely manner rather than waiting for the minutes to be endorsed and then the general won't have to endorse the minutes or will do is receive them for information as they go through their due process. So as it's probably, this could change, but as it's currently, as, as I'm currently thinking is we'll bring the minutes back to each portfolio and then roll them into the following general. So the minutes will actually have about a six weeks to the two month lag. Um, the advisory committees that we had, we, we've run that process for a while. The committee had to endorse the minutes because they were the ones that were there. Um, so they could tell whether they're a true and correct record. Council then just receives them for information and deals with any actions or recommendations that come from them. Yeah, basically, other than that, that's all I can think. I'm happy to answer any question. Councillors, any questions on that? Okay, well, once again, thanks very much, Mr CEO, for the body of work you've undertaken in putting that together. Um, uh, it's uh, really sort of uh, creating a, a, uh, a process which is going to enable us to, to move forward any actions out of council, particularly uh, quite promptly to the next general meeting um, outside of the minutes, which of course will be endorsed appropriately. So that's excellent to see. Okay, well, very good. Well, um, I'll then uh, I'll then move that um, the the um, infrastructure standing committee terms of reference uh, be received. Uh, for information, do we have a second for that? Uh, thanks, Councillor Duff. Uh, those in favour? Okay. Do we call it a resolution, Mr. CEO? It's a recommendation, recommendation. yeah, a resolution. Okay. So for the for the committee. For the, committee. The, the other thing you'll probably start to, well, not probably start to find, but um, certainly the information reports of where they are just purely for information. Um, having a think about how we do this uh, going forward is the information. This is a, a way better mechanism for an information report than a general. A general meeting really should, anything that's brought to a general meeting really, in purest sense, should require an action, not just be receiving for bar, bar minutes mm -hmm. uh, where you receive them. But yeah, so the standing committees do give that opportunity for the information reports to be generated and uh, then we can bring them back and so they become a regular cycle. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. CEO. We'll now move on to item 5.2 in the agenda, uh, which is uh, Councillor Jones' uh, Roads and Drainage Portfolio Report. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, present the first ever Roads and Drainage Report for our standing committees uh, for the month of November. So the following are capital or current or planned works. Our capital works program, the Mergen CBD, uh, the footpath upgrade in Lamb Street, Mergen, it commenced in January 2020 and uh, looks to be completed in January 2021. Now, uh, again, we uh, have had nothing but good feedback from uh, up there and the business uh, owners along that uh, main street of Mergen are extremely happy and uh, commenting on how they're planning on um, capitalising on that and doing some work to their shop front, so that's a great result. Niagara Road, Boyneside, the rehabilitation of existing seal, drainage, construction and flood damage repairs. That commenced in October uh, just recently and uh, expected to be completed in May 21. The bitumen reseal program, bitumen resealing, 40 roads for the uh, 2021 uh, season for the want of a better term. Uh, expected to start in November and uh, currently work our way through to January 21. The Bunyan Mountains car park upgrade. Yourself and I, Mr Mayor, were up there yesterday checking that out. The, uh, they're preparing to get that started, the reinstatement of the Bunya Avenue pedestrian access, upgrade of current footpath and car park due to start in October, which they have. They've start, started preliminary work up there and uh, we hope to have that completed and out of the road up there by December for the uh, Christmas trade. Burrow Street in Wandai, uh, the drainage improvement work starts in November, completed in November. Dingo Creek Car Park, Wandai, upgrade car park to bitumen seal standard starting in November and will be completed throughout the month. That'll be another big improvement there for the uh, township of Wandai on the way in from Mergen. It'll uh, certainly make the appeal to the town very good. Hood Street, Proston, Curb and Channel upgrade, November again through this month uh, will be completed. The Cumbia footpath upgrade, construction of new footpath from Cumbia State School to Francis Street. 
That is due to start uh, in October. We've uh, done preliminary work, design work. We had a meeting on site yesterday with a, uh, a resident from out there, myself, Councillor Henson, and then some of the other senior staff and designers. Uh, we have a couple of little uh, issues we're going to progress. We've got to get an arborist report and uh, also uh, a little bit of consultation moving forward with the uh, people in regards to a few trees along the, uh, the footpath that um, may be in the road. We'll see what, what we'll work through that program anyway. So, uh, Nango State School, the upgrade of pedestrian facilities uh, through November, December. So, that will be another good uh, upgrade there for the uh, safety of the children of our region. Our key highlights for the uh, Capital Works commencement of the significant Bitumen Riggs Hill program in November. On our road network, letter of engagement has been issued to bitumen contractors to complete resealing of 75 kilometres across 49 sites within the South Burnett Road Network, and uh, that information can be found on our website. Uh, I'm sure that'll be up and uh, people will be able to access that if they want to see what roads are getting bitumen. The Mergen CBD footpath renewal project continuing demolition work commencing on stage three and stage two uh, spray pave has been completed. We then go on to our gravel resheeting and heavy formation grade, uh, Deep Creek Road, that was shoulder repairs, that uh, is expected or should be nearly completed now out there in, through October. Mundubra Jurong Road, shoulder grading October, November, uh, that should be well underway. Reedy Creek Road, this has been a problem road for us and uh, Councillor Henshin out there in Division 6. That is a gravel resheet and should happen through November, December. Ryan Regan Road, gravel resheet, uh, also ties in with the Tarong Yarraman Road, gravel resheet, as you see a little bit down further. They're doing a good job out there and the, uh, the residents are certainly happy to receive that work there. Silas Road, also a gravel resheet through November, December. And West Rurulan Road, also through November, December. So the key highlights for our gravel resheeting, the reconstruction work for the Southern Queensland heavy rainfall and flooding event February 2020 has been completed this month. The total value of this work is $2 million and was completed with council crews and local contractors. Our patrol grading, we go on to uh, the localities of Belogi. We've got Walkers Road, Underwoods Road, Barrett, TH Burns, Pryor, uh, McLucas Road, all uh, expected to be through October, November. We have Bowie, a number of roads there, Hayden's Road, Burt Road, Miller's Road, Karingal Road, Bull Camp, and I won't continue reading these out. You can see them all there. They're all on the uh, website for people to have a look at. Bull Camp, uh, Chipinga, Corndale, Coverty, Crawford, East Nanango, Glen Devon, Goodger, Gordon Brook, Haley Creek, Kingaroy, Mamarambi and Runnymede. And some of those roads in Kingaroy, Irene Street, Tessman's North Road, Class and Towns Road, and uh, Glen Devon, we have Grindstone School Road, Lennigan Road, and Runnymede, we go to Runnymede Road, Green Lane, and Walsh's Road. Now, the key highlights for our patrol grading the patrol grading team are anticipating the completion of the entire grading circuit in late November, early December, from which the team will essentially recommence the patrol grading circuit. Now, Mr Mayor, that's uh, something that we made a commitment to uh, our constituents right across the region about 18 months ago, two years, that we would uh, go across every road in, uh, in our shire at least once a year. And so far, we've been, been holding up that promise. So that's uh, a really good uh, feather in the cap for the crews outside, the men and women that are involved in that. And one of the graders has completed their circuit and is assisting the central crew with completing their circuit. So... Uh, we now, with the, uh, we have some slight that rain damage from the last storm, four and six inches fell across in different regions, a little bit of uh, damage across our region, uh, but uh, I, can, I can stand here and uh, hand on heart say that uh, the work that we've been doing and undertaking in the last 18 months has certainly contributed to the, uh, the lack of damage that uh, has occurred because in the past four and six inches would have done considerable damage. So. Again, that obviously state or shows and backs up the statement of uh, our, our drains are certainly uh, functioning a lot better and uh, it also, we are able to now with the, uh, as the previous statement, uh, we can put more resources into areas now if it's, uh, we get serious flood damage, we can attack that very quickly and respond very quickly. So the crews and our plan that we put together over the last, uh, last term and the uh, start of this one is certainly starting to uh, Take, uh, take shape and uh, produce some uh, great outcomes. 
And I will say, Mr Mayor, I'm not going to stand here and say that our work is perfect. There is drainage problems out there and uh, the rain has certainly highlighted that just recently. And I've spoken to a couple of my fellow councillors this morning with regards to meetings and that on site. Some of the drains around the place, we certainly do need to uh, pay more attention. But I continue to say we've never been perfect. I've never said we're perfect, but we are certainly improving and we're getting to where we need to be. So we need to continue on that side. Our roadside slashing and boo mowing, you can see there again, there's a heap of roads right across our region. Bowie, Bayee, Charleston, Chelmsford, Coolabunya, Corndale, Crawford, Cushney, and so on. Fairdale, Glenrock, Greenview, Hodgley, all the way through Manyang, Moonduna, Redgate, Tingura, Wheatlands, Windra, Wirulan. So a massive job ahead of these guys now with the uh, recent rain. The, rain, the grass just takes off, obviously, and uh, we'll certainly be um, receiving phone calls, I guess, as we do every year when it does rain and the grass gets out of control. But these guys out on the slashes and the mowers and parks and gardens and that, they do a wonderful job trying to keep up with everything that they do. So a big, uh, big shout out to all those guys trying to do a great job for the community. Uh, the highlights for that with the recent rainfall around the region and the warmer temperatures, the roadside slashing program is expected to ramp up significantly over the coming months. Our completed works that uh, we need to take note of, at Belogie we have Lawson Road, uh, Lewis Duff Road and Evans Road. This is our patrol grading, I might add. Benark and North, we saw Williams Road, Staines Road, Stephen Road, Bygrave Road, Hathaway Street and Gibson Road all completed. Blackbutt, we had Langton Road, Gibson Road, Reservoir Surface Road, uh, Service Road, sorry. Blackbutt South, Ness Wilson Road, Chipinga, Garden Creek Road, Freshwater Road, Cloyner, Bix Road, Jurong, we have Jackson's, Coven, McLean, McPhee, Ridge, and Iron Bark Road, all uh, patrol grading. Gordon Brook, we have Holtz, Weens, Wicks, Slattery, and Lynns Road. Haley Creek, we have Bookless. Finlay's, Flagstone Creek and Haley Creek Roads. Kingaroy, we have Myers, Mount Rurulan, Borkets, Bridget, Carroll Roads, all done. Memorambi, Means, Memorambi Cemetery, Oil Seeds and Lamperts Roads and Toromeo Old Esk Road. Our roadside slashing and boom mowing, you can see there, they're uh, all jobs that have been completed. We've been to Cloyner, Crownthorpe, Catoba, Manning, Merlewood, Mergen, Oakdale, Sunny, Sunny Nook, Tablelands, Windra, and table ends again, we must have done a rerun on them. Yep, by the looks of it, apologise for that. Our infrastructure series, our gravel resheeting on unsealed roads. Uh, just a little bit of information for people that uh, may not know uh, what is gravel resheeting. Well, gravel resheeting is when new gravel is added to reinstate the existing worn gravel surface. The gravel is generally laid after reshaping the existing road. And then the loose layers are then trimmed and compacted using a grader, water carter and roller. Why do we do this? Gravel wears away over time due to a combination of environmental factors such as wetness and dryness, traffic volume and type and speed of traffic that travel on the road. Gravel resheeting is carried out to provide the following improvements on unsealed roads. Uh, reinstate a reasonable level of service for road users, improve accessibility in wet weather, improve road surface drainage, improve safety, reduce slipperiness and bogginess. And uh, there's a couple of shots there if anyone wants to get on the website. So, Mr Mayor, again, in general, and I continue to say it, and some people in the community like to get on Facebook and whatever else and challenge me on it. Again, I'm not saying we're perfect, but by hell, we're doing a good job in improving. And every time I stand here every month, I can honestly say that the men and women in this council, outside, inside, are doing a great job to try and service the community for what the level of expectation is. And I'll continue to do that. And just on a lighter note, there was a little uh, spud wheel fix uh, photo that got around or brought to my attention and uh, it was near the uh, daycare centre in Drayton Street, Nanango. And uh, it was brought to my attention and I'm happy to say spud did fix, we got the problem fixed and there will be a result that will be beneficial and if spud doesn't know, spud can't fix. So please continue to make phone calls, send me emails. My phone number is 0419 76 994. Please ring me and help me do my job. So I would like to move that uh, my roads and drainage portfolio report be received for the month of November. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Jones, and I'll be happy to second that. Uh, does anyone have any questions, uh, comments in relation to that? Councillor Duff? <laughs> Councillor Jones, you'll need a cup of tea after that one. Well done. 
Um, I, I just wanted to um, say that I travelled along the Burrabri Road to the um, 10 minutes with a mast out at Burren Down, and that is the state of that road is the best I have seen it, and I've been travelling there since I was a little girl, and I was just amazed at how good that road was. So I just wanted to um, just say that you're getting out and about and certainly doing a fantastic job on the road, so good on you. And I've just got a couple of um, um, questions. Just on the Mergen CBD uh, footpath, we've um, got the, um, some of the, the plaques, the discs that are going to be placed in the footpath, and that's the um, history of the town and also the um, Waka Waka artwork and the um, South Mount Regional Council logo. And I just wanted, if for the benefit of, of um, the councillors and the, the gallery, um, what the plan is as far as placing those discs now and a potential opening. That's one question. And the other one is, um, I've had some feedback from the sub-branch members of the RSL and they, I know I sent through that they'd like to get that piece done around the monument and we haven't got that in the budget, but um, they would like to get a quote and potentially maybe apply for some funding through the Saluting Our Service to maybe do around that monument. So I just wanted to um, flag that one because I only spoke to them a couple of days ago and I was going to send that through that they are interested in trying to um, to capitalise on the fact that the guys are out in the, out on the ground doing that, that maybe we could get that piece done if they applied for some funding sure. or even if they contributed some funding. Yeah. So just those two. Thank you, yeah. Mr Mayor. Yeah, sure. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, happy to answer the, the questions. Uh, the first one, definitely the, the plates have arrived for Mergen. So one of the key um, aspects of that project or what we would call the signature of that project is the um, acknowledgement of... Uh, both the history of Mergen and our relationship uh, with our Indigenous community across the, the South Burnett, particularly the Waka Waka. Um, we engage via yourself a, uh, a Waka Waka artist to um, put the symbols of, of that group um, within the footpath. Those plates have arrived. We will send out an invitation, I believe, probably for next week um, to invite the councillors to come and and, and um meet with obviously um, probably the, the Mayor of Sherberg and Venus herself um, to place those plates in. At the moment, we won't be far away from prepping for an official opening now that the plates are here. We'll arrange for the street to be clean from top to bottom, uh, but we're starting to make arrangements now. Following the placement of those plates, that won't be an official opening. It was just more of a, um, a recognition of our, our relationship and a contribution to them to the project. They've been very, very supportive, particularly Venus. Um, I think the work that has been undertaken by the infrastructure staff there along with yourself and the Mergen um, business community has got a great outcome for the community in working in partnership. So um, even the historic plates that I've seen look sensational. Um, I think that it goes to show what we can do when council works um, to, to get an, an outcome for the CBD and, and for the business community. I think if you uh, want an example of a, of a well-run project, I think our consultation there has really um, supported that. In regards to the second question, um, what we'll do is we'll lodge that up, uh, Christy, as a um, as a request, and we'll get some information together in relation to costs and um, how that may go forward. So I think the first step for, would be for us to price that properly and then come back with some options to either the RSL or um, to give them some options around how they might be able to get a grant or those sort of things. Any funds from council we just bring back for resolution uh, through that process. So... Um, yeah, all in all, um, good quote. It's um, it's a great project, and I'm looking forward to seeing it finish. Just in regards to Burrabri Road, um, I will say that I think it was the third week I was here. I was on that road. I actually got bogged in my four wheel drive. Um, so it's it's a um, it's a road that I actually do um, take an interest in. So um, it was a little bit touch and go there for about four k's. Um, but yet, I would say is that just acknowledgement to the staff, particularly our operational staff, if I can, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a look at the unsealed program yesterday and actually how that is planned and executed. It's not done by myself or Kevin. It's actually done by the works coordinators um, and our work supervisors, particularly uh, Cole Miller and um, John Ogilvy and Errol. Um, they're doing a tremendous job. They track every road that's graded. They have a full program. They have a full list of works. You see that on our website. And what I would say is that um, that program is very much driven by the outcome of them and those operators that do that work on the ground. Um, they, they take a real interest in it and they take real pride of work. So that's why we're seeing those results. And the fact is that we're 
this is the second year now that we'll be back through the entire network with the grade, which is what we committed to do. Um, it just goes to show that the um, the pride that those guys take um, in making sure we deliver good services. So. I just would like to plug them, Mr. Mayor, if I may. That's that's an achievement on based on their work, not on not on ours. So it's it's tremendous for council. Again, anyone who's got an issue with their road or we haven't graded your road, similar to what we did last year, would encourage you to get in contact with us, and we're happy to come and have a look. And if we've missed one or two, please let us know, and we'll circle back around and make sure we get those done. So um, that's us, Mr. Mayor. Thank you much, uh, General Manager, Mr. CEO. Just just on the official opening, um, it is a part-funded government grant project through Works for Queensland. Uh, so any of the opening, there is a fair bit of rigmarole that goes with that. With um, We have to advise the minister of the opening dates. We have to, any of the releases, any of the information has to be approved. So, so the opening gets a bit fluid depending on, uh, and particularly with the election now as they roll out, the mayor referred before as they're, they're setting uh, ministerials and things. So. I'm not sure whether that'll hold it up or not, but we will have to go through the formal process with the minister's office as far as the opening. And I know no one would ever, ever, ever do this, have their unofficial opening with a pink ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. CEO. You're well and truly on top of count on uh, Councillor Duff's thinking. Um, thanks very much, uh, General Manager. And I certainly know that uh, the Minister, should he um, be allocated that portfolio for this next term, uh, in speaking with him before the election, he was very keen to uh, make sure that he made it to the uh, to the Mergen CBD footpath opening. So um, I think we should expect a favourable response there. Uh, just in terms of uh, the... Uh, Unsealed uh, program. It's work, program of work that's been undertake, undertaken, as uh, as uh, outlined there by uh, Councillor Jones and General Manager. Um, I think it is important that we do recognise the work of the works coordinators in uh, a lot of work that's been undertaken in building the standard of that hierarchy of unsealed roads. It's an ongoing work in progress. We know it's not perfect, but I'd like to. Um, I'd like to recommend out of today's meeting that we uh, we send a letter of thanks to the uh, works coordinators, uh, congratulating them on their efforts, and uh, asking if they could pass that also on to their staff uh, for the tremendous work that's been done in improving the standard of our unsealed roads across the region. Thanks, General Manager. Um, the the uh, other thing is just also to uh, reiterate to everybody that should you have issues with your roads, uh, the information in relation to all of these uh, forward forward programs on roads is on Council's website. So if you're not sure what's happening with your road, go on the website and have a look. The information will be there. Or as Councillor Jones has said, uh, I know he's been out and about extensively since the rain, travelling all, all over the countryside, checking roads every single day. Feel free to make contact with Councillor Jones or contact uh, Councillor's customer contact team and, uh, and lodge a customer request uh, ring 41899100 and the staff will log that request if you've got an issue with your road uh, and our staff, well, I'm sure, will make sure that they uh, come out and uh, and assess that and undertake the necessary work should it be required. Um, so uh, we need to work together with the community to make sure that we have that knowledge so that we can deal with those issues, particularly uh, after the rain. Uh, the other thing, and I'll come to Councillor Hanson shortly, Councillor Hanson, was just to uh, also perhaps ask... Um, if uh, with with the uh, the Cumbia footpath upgrade, um, just I suppose wanted to acknowledge that uh, once again council is actively working to make sure that the allocation of resources in relation to capital works are distributed fair and equitably right across our region. We have a history as a council of making sure that we don't forget our smaller communities. Um, and I think that's another example where a significant amount of money is being invested by council with the support uh, of government in, uh, in developing that footpath uh, through uh, the main street of Cumbia. So um, I think it's important that we do acknowledge the work there. So, um, Councillor Henshin, you had some uh, comments? Yes, thanks, Mr Mayor and fellow councillors. Yesterday, I had the privilege to attend uh, the Melbourne Cup in Cumbia, and I'd like to pass on to our roads gang, and uh, it was brought to my attention by several locals, and Councillor Jones would remember very well several years ago how disgruntled there were some rural landowners out in that neck of the woods. And, and that being said, 
there was some 160 mil of rain out there over the last 10 days in that district west of Cumbia. There was serious road damage and there was debris and, and trees and logs over the road. And a lady came to me yesterday and wanted to pass on her heartfelt thanks to the guys that cleared that road within 12 hours. They'd gravelled a section that had completely washed out on a corner. That was from an elderly lady, a mature lady that, you know, that we all know what debris and floodwaters are like. She could not thank the council and, and wanted me to pass on to the guys and the staff. They were on Niagara Road and were there within 12 hours and had that road fixed. So that's a credit to them. So I pass on from the rural, the rural uh, landowners out there how appreciative they were that what happened out there and so quick. Remembering, like I said, several years ago, you weren't going to get those compliments very regularly. So thanks very much to the, to the guys behind the scenes that do all the work and it's nice to get some compliments occasionally, isn't it? So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Henshin. Um, I'll come to you shortly, uh, if I could, uh, uh, Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, just, uh, General Manager, I also wanted to point out uh, for the media and the community that uh, the roads that we mentioned here are primarily local roads. Uh, we have different uh, roads are classified differently. Um, and, of course, we have responsibility for local roads under our jurisdiction, but there are a number of roads across our region that are also uh, either on the state highway network or are in fact state controlled roads for which the state government is responsible. And I just want to highlight that council has been working uh, proactively with the department, with key staff in the department uh, and with government uh, over a number of months now in relation to the Maidenwell uh, to Bunya Mountains uh, missing links. So there's some gravel sections there that we understand. Uh, we know very, you know, intimately well the benefit of having that road connection completed in terms of the tourism industry for our region, um, as well as the safety issues that exist on that road. Uh, just to uh, reinforce that Council has been advocating this for some for this some time. Councillor Jones and I were there yesterday afternoon having a look at that road again, and uh, we will continue to work with uh, senior staff in the Department of Transport and Main Roads. Uh, and with the newly appointed minister to make sure that uh, we do everything we can to have that matter addressed. Furthermore, Mundubra Jurong Road is a key uh, is a key uh, transport route for uh, trucks bringing particularly cattle in the beef industry uh, from central Queensland through into southern Queensland. And uh, we understand that um, that you know it's a it's a major contributing asset to the economy uh, to the beef economy. And so we will again continue as we have done so far to advocate uh, to government uh, and to key staff in, in the department uh, to uh, have that 11 kilometre section over time um, sealed appropriately. And of course, then we've got Bayee Road. I know there's been some commentary around Bayee Road in recent times, the community, uh, with the uh, the uncompleted section there. And I might just ask General Manager, would you be able to just give us an, a bit of an update on, on Bayee Road, if you could, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I might uh, I might let Kevin to just talk through that project. We are doing a missing stage there um, early in the new year. Um, I might get Kev to just give some over details of that one there, if that's okay. Uh, just just a, a bit of uh, uh, brief information uh, by E Road. Uh, we've also have Wheatlands uh, School drop down area that uh, we have some funding for. We're looking at commencing that work uh, during the Christmas holidays. And, and on the back of that would then commence uh, a section on Bayee Road, essentially from Flats Road up uh, heading north uh, up to the, uh, the widened section, which is in the order of 800 to 900 metres. That's a TIDS-funded project, so it's a, it's a state-controlled road. And so we have the funding through uh, Department of Main Roads. And so we'll be looking at commencing Bayee Road, as I said, after the Wheatlands school drop-off area improvements are done. Thanks very much, Kev. That's excellent. And uh, just to confirm, I suppose, to the media and the community, to all councillors, that uh, that uh, planning for that Bayee Road uh, up through Wheatland School has been going on for some time. Um, our staff are well across it. Uh, it will be completed, as, as Kev indicated, uh, in coming months uh, under the funding from the Transport Infrastructure Development Scheme, which is a, a state-funded um, 
program. Uh, our council gets funding under that program and we've got to make pro decisions about what are our strategic priorities. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that's uh, made clear to the community that that work will be happening. So thanks very much, General Manager and Kev, for the work you've done there. It'll be good to see that project completed uh, in, in coming months. Thank you. Right, Councillor Shoemaker. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Jones, for your report. Um, just a couple of questions for me and a couple of things that I'm, I'm interested in uh, discussing later or, or understanding some more information about. Um, the first one, just we talked about the recent rainfall and the roadside slashing program, and I understand Councillor Jones mentioned that's about to ramp up, so I was just curious what that actually looks like in terms of ramping up, um, what the project or what the plan is for that. Um, my second question just is in relation to those capital works. It's really impressive um, program of works, but I just wanted to check if there's any budgetary constraints or any um, possible overspends that we should be aware of in those capital works at the moment as they sit. And then in terms of um, just some questions, in I've had a lot of inquiries in relation to driveways, uh, driveways that you know, have been put in some time ago or, and I know I really appreciate the support of the works team who've come and met with me at a couple of those locations, but I'm just probably interested if we've got some fact sheets or some information about the responsibilities of landowners um, in relation to, and council in relation to driveway access, because I appreciate that is a challenge, particularly in some places where the curb and channeling has been damaged and or, you know, things change over time. So. And the last question I just wanted to mention, you know, we were in Blackbutt the other day um, checking out the sensory garden, which was amazing. Thank you, Councillor Jones. And we did look across and I, we all noted the, um, the gravel roads in the Blackbutt CBD sort of at the back end of the um, Morris Street. Uh, and just probably keen to understand where that may be um, potential to, to upgrade that road or improve that with some sort of ceiling being that it is in the town. So they're just my question, please. Thanks, Councillor Schumacher. Uh, General Manager. Yep. yep, no worries through you, Mr Mayor. I'll try and grab them all. Um, Kev will, will talk about the slashing. Um, just in relation to the driveways, I'll touch on that one first. We will be bringing council revised uh, road policy in the coming months for consultation to, we had a number of policies that were through council from previous years, going right back to um, amalgamation around um, road hierarchy, constructed roads. We're looking to amalgamate them all into one. Um, what we've done at the back um, that you'll see in your um, sheet, uh, in your in your report, is we're introducing a thing called the infrastructure series where what we'll do is each month we'll try and target a um, particular item or fact sheet so we can actually put them up on our website. A bit while we do gravel roads, why do we reseal? And as we bring those stuff on, we'll actually probably do you know driveways and those sort of things so that they'll be available on our website. And that's probably one of the benefits we see of the standing committee's ability to be able to talk about those things in, in council. You'll see shortly in water and wastewater, we've got a fact sheet around water meter replacements and those sort of things. So um, generally the, the responsibility, uh, just to touch on the driveway issue, uh, generally the, the driveway is the responsibility of the property owner. Um, we are happy to talk with anyone in that space if there's you know concerns either side of that. Um, so I encourage anyone who's got an issue in that space um, uh, to get in contact with us. In regards to overspends, uh, the budget reporting that we do for projects will come through the quarterly review. So um, there will always be pluses and minuses um, in that space. Um, any projects that we don't actually have those numbers with us at the moment, so we would take that on notice to come back through in those quarterly reviews. Uh, Morris Street um, is a good street that uh, to pick up on. Um, it's been come up in a few conversations that probably over the last year or so. When we look at Council's forward program in the new year, we'll definitely be identifying that for, for discussion. There's been a number of them, particularly, I think we did a run in Proston uh, late last year to pick up those same sort of things. We picked up a few, I think it was Beatty Street and also the one to the um, to the transfer station. Um, same with uh, Logan Street in, in Kingaroy, we did that one as well. So there's definitely an opportunity to look at in Council's upgrade program when it looks at its whole network in the new year. I, I think it's an opportunity to look at definitely trying to reduce that, um, the unsealed roads in and around towns. Um, from an, Even from a, a livability point of view, they do cost us quite a bit of money to maintain because we have to float gear into town to especially do those, those items, so quite happy to look at that. Um, in regards to the slashing, um, I might let Kev um, respond to that one, if that's okay. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Aaron. Uh, just in regards to the slashing, so so we have, uh, particularly over the last six months, uh, have been doing slashing and, and boom mowing, and uh, but in terms of ramping up, uh, we, we've we've had some recent uh, good weather and um, and temperatures starting to warm up. So so in terms of our ramping up, we've we've currently got four slashes uh, engaged uh, local, our council crews. Uh, Doing slashing, the priority at the moment is our our highways, our state controlled um, network, uh, and and then we'll focus on the uh, the the long list, which uh, which is uh, if if the weather continues, uh, we'll we'll continue to grow. So uh, we get to a stage where where if um, if we do get uh, significant uh, weather and and growth in the grass, then then we do look at. Um, Increasing the capacity of our crews um, through engaging local contractors, uh, but at this stage, where um, we have our, our four slashes uh, uh, working on the state highways. Thanks, Kev. Okay, thanks, um, General Manager. That's great, Councillor Jones. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I just um, I just briefly want to touch on and finishing up and. Uh, I'd uh, like to acknowledge Councillor Shoemaker's mention of Morris Street because uh, <laughs> it certainly backs up what I've been saying to General Manager me, and we've been chasing that street. And it's uh, and to their um, to their defence, Aaron has certainly uh, worked with me in trying to get that, and the, the rest of the council has seen exactly where it was. So thank you very much for that. That uh, certainly uh, endorses my case. But I just want to touch on a couple of things that we've been mentioned here before the Cumbia footpath upgrade. Now, as I mentioned in my report, we went out and met with a. Uh, a resident out there, and um, we're in a position where, like as you uh, indicated, Mr. Mayor, the funding is trying to be dispersed evenly across the region so everyone gets a fair crack. Now, the problem we have as a council is we have to spend this money in Cumbia um, by December, otherwise, we lose it. So that's why, and to our staff's credit, they are certainly moving as of yesterday when we walked away from that meeting, and the work has already started, and we're certainly um, for want of a better word, in a hurry to get a resolution out there or you know, some sort of a, uh, a, a answer to the problem. So it's, it's regarding fire trees in particular and uh, we had a discussion with that uh, lady out there and uh, we'll certainly go back to the community and have consultation and move very quickly. So if we don't get that money spent, we lose it. So I said to the lady yesterday, far better off spending than in your own hometown Cumbia, so she was agreeable to that and everyone's on the same page there. Um, potholes. I just want to um, address potholes. As we know, when it rains, potholes become turned from uh, small holes into very big holes very quickly. So before the people out there, when I say please you know, go easy on the potholes, we, we know that they just pop up everywhere overnight. And our staff, we have uh, a limited uh, uh, resources to attend to these potholes. Now, I challenge anyone to drive across any other council and find roads that haven't got potholes and then absolutely multiply by the hundreds when we get rain. So yes, please continue to report them and happy to take phone calls on them, but please don't be abusive and you know, bag and counsel, oh, here's potholes, they're saying the roads are great and all this sort of stuff and there's potholes everywhere. Take the sensible approach. We want to try and fix that. And uh, the other one is, as you mentioned, state roads. Um, and I'd like to um, just put this, and the uh, general manager can take it on notice. Um, is there a possibility that we can get a list of our state control roads, give it to the media, get it into the papers and uh, with people that have issues with those roads? And I'm not shying away from the responsibility that it is council's responsibility to try and lobby and, and uh, source more funding from state and federal to do the roads. But I've had conversations in the last couple of days with people from all over the region uh, mentioning and Wandai Proston Road was one, and it's a state road. So I explained to the gentleman, and uh, he was quite acceptable at the end of it, but I said to him, if we start spending ratepayers' money on state control roads and neglect our council control roads, what do you think is going to happen to council? So he was quite understanding of that. So people need to understand that we can't spend money, ratepayer money, on state roads to fix problems up. So if there's an issue on a state road that's quite dangerous, it's not a matter of, well, if it's dangerous, Aaron, you can help me out here. But if it's very dangerous, we can go and react pretty quickly. But if it's you know, an ongoing maintenance program, we've got to wait 
to be told by state and all that sort of stuff. So maybe you can just back that up. So, but I would like to see a uh, list of the state controlled roads that we we have to lobby and get more funding for, but we we don't have the say on when we get to the uh, maintenance of it. Yeah, three, Mr. Mayor. Um, we'll, we'll mark that up as an action to to bring that information back. We may even introduce that in the next standing committees uh, as an infrastructure series of the state roads. Um, I think they're on our website, but we'll we'll look to definitely communicate that with the public. Just to probably clarify, you're 100% right. Um, in the in cases of the DTMR roads, we don't use council funds to, to maintain those. Um, we have a contract with the department for about 1.7 million to do maintenance on their network. Obviously, um, it goes through a prioritisation methodology to remove hazards and undertake works um, in conjunction with the department's approval. So there are certain defects that are identified for repair and they have to be done within a certain time frame. Um, similar to ourselves, the department is subject to funding limitations, so you don't have a, you never have enough money to fix every defect. And you are quite right, what you'll see, and I'll, I'll, I'll support your comments, particularly now, between now and probably March, as you see more and more rainfall events, you will see more and more damage occur on the, on the sealed network. Um, just purely because the water that comes into the surface and obviously with the traffic, um, we'll, we'll start to see a lot of these defects come through. From council's point of view, the way that we look after our seal network is to make sure that we have a good reseal program. Um, and that's where we invest a lot of our money to making sure that we do proper remedial works before we do the reseals to make sure council gets its return on its investment. That means a lot of times that we will do interim fixes on potholes that yes, we know that won't last five years and those sort of things but we inject our majority of our funds for our sealed network in doing proper repairs before we do a reseal. Um, the same as you replace the boards on your house that are, are knackered before you paint your house. So um, we do make sure that we take an asset management approach. Similar to what we've done with the unsealed stuff, we make sure that we fix the drainage when we do the resheating and those sort of things to protect our investments. So there is a method to it. In regards to the DTMR network where we see large volumes of, of sections that are, are sub or who are in disrepair, that is not done under your general maintenance contract with council. That's actually a responsibility of the department to program through rehabilitation works um, and upgrades and capital works. Similar to bike by E, we, we, we do edge breaks and those sort of things, but the actual upgrades of those roads are done through a main road scheme. Mandaba Durong is being done through a state uh, strategic route scheme that is not done through council and those sort of things. So again, any issues on the DTMR network that's hazardous or stuff like that, I would encourage the, anyone to get in contact with council in the first instance and we would program that for immediate repair if it's, if it's warranted. Um, again, we're happy to, to provide some further info on how that works, but um, your comments are duly noted and um, support those, those statements. Thanks, General Manager. And if I could just, in relation to Council Shoemaker's question around um, budget uh, tracking of budgets across capital works programs, uh, will uh, that will be addressed as part of our December quarterly review uh, of Council's budget. So, if we could perhaps just uh, let you build that into the budget review at the end of December quarter, that would be uh, much appreciated. Thanks, GM Council Shoemaker, uh, if you're comfortable with that. Um, the the um, other thing I wanted just to note was that. Our council actually got out, I noticed, and, and sprayed a lot of those uh, weeds. And I don't know, Councillor Henshin, what they're called, but they've got yellow flowers and they're along the highways right across southern Queensland. And as I drive around, as you know, I do extensively, not just in our region, but in other regions, I often compare. And it was pleasing to see that we had all of ours sprayed out before the rain and dead. Uh, and I drive across other regions. Uh, I apologise to my fellow mayors, but I noticed that they hadn't done the same. So it was good to see that with our roadside slashing, our team actually are doing that forward planning. They're thinking, well, we'll get the, you know, we've got in and got the spraying done, killed off the weeds around the guideposts and all the other, you know, uh, noxious weeds that are on our highways. And then they go in and slash them so they don't spread the flower. So it was really good to see that, that, there's, le that there's a sophisticated level of planning around that. Um, and I know uh, we always do a really great job. Our highway slashing, I noticed, is a, a top standard. We always seem to have the, the, the neatest highways <laughs> anywhere around. So congratulations to the fellows. And I'm pleased to hear that we've got four slashes, Kev, out on the diagonal and the bunya. Uh, doing that work and other highways at the moment. The other thing was just also to acknowledge, Councillor Jones spoke about the footpath uh, in Blackbutt. Just want to acknowledge that I believe, uh, General Manager, that's being funded under the Drought Communities Program, uh, that, which is a federal funded program. And that's, that's, the, the, that's the Cumbia Program. Is that right? Cumbia, Cumbia Footpath. Cum oh, sorry, Cumbia yeah. Footpath. Did I say Proston? Right. Right. 
Yeah, the Cumbia footpath, that's a federally funded program, is that correct? Yeah, so I just want to acknowledge uh, our uh, federal member, uh, Federal Member Little Proud, and the federal government uh, for the funding they've provided to enable council to do that work on, sorry, the Cumbia footpath. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so thanks very much. Okay, Councillor Schumacher. Thank you. Just um, one last question. Just in relation to the DTMR works on the other side of Tingura, was just keen to understand what's actually happening there. If anyone is aware. Sorry. Uh, so that, that work uh, north of Tingura on the Bunya Highway is uh, being undertaken through road tech, uh, through the uh, Department of Main Roads. It's not something that council is directly involved in. So what you'll find is, is in some uh, upgrades and construction work on our highways, council does have uh, the, uh, is the, the contractor for that. In this particular case, it's, um, it's entirely through the, the Department of Transport and Main Roads through their construction arm, Road Tech. And so there's... Um, a section heading north, it's, it's the, the, the most obvious section with the rutting and the, the bumps and so forth, and essentially it's a, a widening and a, an overlay. Yeah, uh, thanks very much, Kevin. Good to see that that work between Tingura and Wandai is now finally happening. I know we've all been aware that it's been an issue for some time. Good to see that the department are now attending to that. Uh, Councillor Jane, Councillor Duff, I think, got in first, so we'll go to you, Councillor Duff. Um, um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted a question about um, Chingura Chelmsford Road because I'm getting a few complaints about some of the um, pavement on the Chingura Chelmsford Road, particularly the, the um, wobbly pavement. Uh, people are worried about caravans and different things tipping over, so I just wanted to comment on where that's what's happening with the Chingura Chelmsford Road. Also, with the slashing, I'm just wondering, are we moving towards, like, some kind of a, a methodology around slashing and what's an acceptable length and, and timeline so that when, if people are complaining to councillors about, you know, that their road hasn't been slashed in and what would be an acceptable length of time before a road would get slashed. Like, I know that main roads have methodologies about when it gets to a certain length, it's intervention levels and stuff. Is that something that we're looking at or, you know, to get a bit more... Um, I know that we can't predict the weather, but just to sort of get a, a bit, bit more clarity around that so that we um, councillors, when we get complaints, we can sort of say, well, you know, you know, the acceptable timeline is, you know, you might have to wait a couple of months or you might have to wait, you know, that kind of stuff. Is that something we're looking at? And also, um, I'm also very interested in, in, our, in our unformed road um, methodology or policy around that because I know that there is um, debate in some areas about roads that aren't getting graded because they're not regarded as formed. And when they are formed, it was because the former council did work on them. I just wanted to know where we're at with, with that, um, you know, bedding down what is an unformed and formed road. So that's my um, three questions. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, three, Mr Mayor. Um, the first one, Tingora Chelmsford Road, uh, fully agree with the comments there. So that is a, a, a Lars road, so a local road of regional significance. We've identified that road for um, rehabilitation to commence under the TIDS program. I think it's in 21-22, something along. Yeah, yep. So it'll go through the RRTG. So we have put in for a significant funding there. Um, what we see on the road is that it's starting to show a bit of fatigue. I think everyone's shown it. That, there's obviously um, uh, roads that are, are, are better and worse in that space, but now is a good time for us to intervene. Again, return on investment, the, the scope of work we're looking there. I think we're looking in the order of about $2 million to, to get that road back to standard. And by intervening early in line with our asset management and planning for these things, it saves us considerable money. So um, from, a, from an infrastructure point of view, that road is identified as a high priority for us. Um, so we look forward to doing some work there. There is a bit of maintenance there to be done in the interim until that money is made available. Um, but essentially, we would not, uh, we talk about return on investment. The road is overdue for reseal. We think that would be a mistake to reseal that road without actually getting in, fixing those things properly. So um, again, credit to, to the planning team, James and his team and Kev to look at that early and, and put in for some 50-50 uh, funding from the ROTG. It will come up as a very high priority within that group. So um, we look forward to that coming on the program. 
Uh, your second question in relation to slashing. Uh, what we'll do, actually I'll, I'll probably take both of those questions if I may, around that and the, un, and the unformed roads. Uh, we'll be bringing that back for a um, service level discussion in the new year when you look at your services and your hierarchy and your policies in and around that. So with the slashing at the moment, there's obviously we, we go um, on a zonal system similar to the unsealed roads. Um, some some places, uh, grass is an interesting, how long is a piece of grass if that's a, if that's the sense. Um, what we like to do is we don't like to wait till the road is this high before we slash it. If we're there, we slash. For us, it's making sure that we can get around the circuit as quickly as we possibly can. Um, in some cases, that could be four weeks, it could be six weeks, it could be 12 weeks. What we've done in the past is if we see an overgrow of, of complaints and obviously coming into wet weather, Kev has a, a capacity to bring on contractors at interim times. And in the past, it's one of those ones where you'll never get a permanent service level. So main roads will use an intervention level that is the guidepost height and those sort of things. At council, we don't generally do that. We make sure that if the grass looks high, we mow it. Similar as if we would go around an unsealed road, if the road needs grading, we grade it. We don't, we don't, we don't get too hung up on the science of it. So the biggest thing for us, and particularly with any mowing program, even in your parks, is not so much the height of the grass, it's your ability to actually get around on a routine basis to do that. Because we work on routine maintenance, we don't work on intervention level. So the biggest thing is, is your ability to respond. Obviously what happens with slashing is that you mow the grass, is the grass grows back quicker than what it does traditionally, that's when we need to increase those resources. So we're quite happy to talk through that each month if we bring you on additional contractors. I think after February, we own what, four slashes, Kev, or three or four, we up, we actually brought into eight. So we, we do have capacity to do that within limited. Kev holds a bit of money there for that to make sure we have the slashing, um, to particularly to make sure we get in those areas around Silverleaf and those ones early. So um, in regards to the roads in the road hierarchy, we'll bring that back um, through, through policy um, and also through your service levels early in the year when you start to review your assets uh, from January onwards. Just in, in, to answer the question in its, um, in its element, council does not maintain uh, unconstructed roads and nor are we allowed, required to by law, okay? Um, if that was the case, council's road network would jump from 3,200 to 5,000 kilometres of road. So as, as an example, um, all the roads that uh, are on your register are roads that you construct and maintain. And obviously we've got unformed roads as well that are used for access and those sort of things. But I understand there's probably a little bit of ambiguity that we need to work through across the region um, and quite happy to do so when we look at our assets from January onwards, Mr. Mayor, if that's okay. If that answers your question, Councillor. Thanks, General Manager. Councillor Potter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just um, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, Aaron, just curious, when you're going off a main road, onto one of our local roads, who is responsible for the for the connection between those two roads? Because I've had a few people with a few of the, the roads, especially off the King Orokuyu Road, and how dangerous it is to get on and off our roads onto the main highway. Thank yeah, you. so generally the DTMR um, will pick up the corridor through the intersection. So whatever treatment is on the DTMR road or a turning lane and those sort of things is, is responsibility of DTMR. In relation to the intersection approaches, we try to work in collaboration um, on those. There's been a number of intersections where the meets with ours that have been identified for um, upgrades under high risk, uh, black spot and those sort of things. So there's a number of intersections that we're looking at bringing through for planning um, around trying to, to fix those intersections up. There's quite a few that are substandard, which would have been okay back in 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 the day, if that makes sense. But the, you see significant traffic movement changes. Um, particularly, what we do, um, I'll, I'll say, is that we have a good relationship with main roads in this space to, to work on planning. You'll see a large, obviously, high risk road program on the Diagola James is in the order of twenty four million dollars. Um, a lot of that is intersection targeted, with it, obviously with our own roads. So. Um, if you have any of those roads that you think is an issue, I would encourage you to send them through to us and we can definitely start to start commencing a planning process to, to look at some of those. Thanks, General Manager. Well, we have no further comments or questions. Uh, we'll wrap up there on roads. And thanks again, Councillor Jones. All those in favour uh, of Councillor Jones' report being received for information. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, recommendation passed unanimously. Okay, we'll now move on uh, to Item 6.1 on the agenda, which is the Local Disaster Management Water and Wastewater Portfolio Report. And uh, happy to hand over you, Councillor Froloff. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And that Local Disaster Management 
Due to the storms over the last several days, council infrastructure team have attended to minor flash flooding on roads and tree removal at a number of locations in the South Bernard area. All roads are trafficable, with minor silt remaining on some floodways. The South Burnets network has held up well with the multiple rolling storms across the region. Kingaroy Kuya Road, Kingaroy Burren Down Road and Aerodrome Road all experienced flash flooding, causing road crews to erect signage until the water eased. Today, all roads are reopened and all, um, to traffic. Recent, the, um, recently, the Booyard Creek Road bridge was replaced. The bridge experienced water flowing over, but only damage encountered was damage to the gravel approaches and not the bridge. The road is, out, however, still trafficable. QFS, QFES, QPS and SES had all minimal reports of damage in the region, but it is understood Cumbia reported wheat crop damage with some laying on the ground and not recoverable. Water and wastewater. The following are current and planned works, updated as of the 27th of October 2020. The capital works for 2021 and current water main replacements are as follows. Youngman Street North, trunk water main replacement, expected to be completed in November. Reen Street, residential water main replacement, also expected to be completed in November. Wandai, <clears throat> and in Wandai we have Haley Street from Hodge to Scott Street, trunk residential water main replacement to um, expected completion date um, in January. And regional we have replaced 1,000, we're on the verge of replacing 1,000 water metres and to expect a date of completion in March 2021. Class A recycled um, water facility in Wandai, the construction of the new Class A recycled water facilities at Wandai should be completed in December 2020. The, res the replacement of reservoir roof at Arana, the replacement of the roof and repair to structural supports at Arana Reservoir should be completed by February 2021 and the SCADA and cyber security updates by replacing the existing SCADA to regionalise the system should be completed by May 2021. Goodenbrook Dam spillway design is on the go and should be completed by May 2021. Some highlights we have are the replacement of reservoir roof Scott Street Wandai has been completed. The renewal project is part of Council's commitment to provide safe, reliable water supplies by ensuring the reservoir is protected against rain and vermin infiltration into the stored treated water. And also the Class A recycled water facilities at Wandai. Um, elect electricians are on site installing switchboards and electrical work in the lead up to commissioning of the plant that will provide safe, affordable water to the Wandai sports fields. This project demonstrates Council's commitment to assisting community groups with safer outcomes. Sewer relining, the critical urgent pipe bursting works in Anango have been completed. One of the main trunk sewer lines had deteriorated to the point of collapse. The use of pipe bursting technology demonstrates Council's willingness to utilise best practice to deliver the cost-effective sustainable asset renewals for our community. Restriction and dam levels as of the 27th of the 10th, 2020. Key highlights, all towns still remain on level three water restrictions. Council continues to monitor water storage throughout the region and the current levels are as follows. Bandooma Dam, 30.7%, BP Dam, 11.7%, Gordon Brook Dam, 48.4% and Boo Bear Dam, 20%. Kingaroy water, water supply is blended by 70% Baduma and 30% Gordon Brook. With Gordon Brook Dam falling below 50%, the water quality will be an issue should the Baduma pipeline have an unscheduled failure or outage for several days. Reactive works year to date. Council staff have attended 42 sewer requests this financial year, and they've also attended 286 water requests for, um, for this financial year. 
Um, completed capital works for noting are the replacement of the reservoir roof, Scott Street, and also the sewer relining, which I've already spoken about. Infrastructure series, the water, water meter replacement. Council has started its second year of the water meter replacements with the commencement of the first 700 metres to be replaced each year in an ongoing cycle. This will see council metres assets maintained at 10 years old or less. Nanango commenced its replacement program from the 26th of October 2020 and is expected to be completed by December this year. Why does council replace water metres? Water metres are mechanically are mechanical devices that wear with usage. Council replaces water metres for several reasons, some of which include the age of the metre, the amount of water not being registered becomes too great, or if the metre is damaged and stops registering altogether. Who is responsible for the water metres? Water metres are the property of the South Burnett Regional Council, but it is the responsibility of the property owner to maintain the water under section 191 of the Queensland Government Water Supply or Safety and Reliability Act 2008. It is an offence to connect or disconnect from the water providers infrastructure without their written consent. Remember, a simple check of your water meter can help detect possible leaks inside your property. To do this, simply turn off all taps and water using appliances in and around your property. Then check for signs of movement on the dials on your water meter. If there is movement, there could be a leak. And there's a photo of one of the water meters. And detailed dam storage and usage figures along with the reactive works for this financial year will be tabled and available on Council's website after this meeting. I'd like my um, local disaster management and water and wastewater portfolio to be received. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, Councillor Frohloff, for that comprehensive report and to uh, staff in the department for providing that uh, very, very uh, detailed set of information. Um, if I could uh, just, uh, do I need to move a seconder on that first? Um, we can take a seconder. Thanks, Councillor Duff. I've got a seconder on that. We'll now move into discussion on the contents of the report. Um, and uh, just uh, wanted to uh, make uh, everyone aware in terms of the media and the community and councillors that uh, we have uh, an allocation on Baramba Barker, which is the Pajoki peterson Dam, 1,850 megalitres per annum. And you can see the usage there on page 23. Uh, and for the Boyne River, which is the Tarong pipeline that comes from Boonduma, uh, and of which, from which we, we, we access high priority water, we have an allocation of 1,825 megalitres per annum, um, again on page 23. And you can see that that's used for various uh, purposes. It's applied to various purposes as shown in the table on page 22. Um, and I just wonder also, uh, um, General Manager, if you could perhaps just for the benefit of councillors and the community uh, and, and the media, provide us with a, uh, a little bit of a summary as to what is Class A water and what body of work has been done by council in terms of um, getting us to the point now where we can provide this Class A water to all of those sporting fields, which I believe includes uh, the soccer, cricket, rugby league and uh, and the um, the uh, the club, the golf club, for one of the term, the... Um, the golf club in, in Wandai, because I know that's a lot of work's gone into that, and I believe it's going to be a tremendous resource, uh, as well as Kingaroy. Kingaroy's already got theirs, but uh, really keen to see here the report that's in relation to Wandai Class A water. What is Class A water? How is it treated? And uh, what will be the benefit to uh, to the community? Thanks. Yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. I might hand to uh, Tim to explain the difference and just probably just talk about the, uh, the Wandai project, if that's OK. Um, with the with the um, uh, class A water, so you, you it's it's essentially it's still waste water, uh, but it's just treated to a higher standard. It it uh, bacter more bacterially safe, for want of better words. Uh, previously, the uh, uh, waste water for one die and everything was determined that uh, your exclusion from uh, contact sports, particularly, uh, it, it's. Uh, Presents, presents a high risk. So uh, the recycled water is basically a, a, an essential normal water treatment plant. You can't uh, physically drink it, but it is a, a, a hell of a lot safer than a standard wastewater treatment plant, I guess. 
Yeah, and it, yeah, it is. It's the alternative to the potable supply. The um, uh, the benefits of that is the nutrients in those waters actually uh, encourage field growth. Uh, you know, for your grasses and stuff like that. So, so really, in summary, the Class A water is the appropriate water for sporting fields, um, and uh, in fact, seems to be the, the, the better option. Yeah. yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, just um, what we might do um, is re-release our video too for the Class A that we've done out of the Narita plant. So we did a video last year showing, obviously, the King Roy sporting fields. They look they look sensational. Um, the big difference there is we provide that water to sporting clubs at, I think, 10 cents a kilolitre um, compared to a consumption charge. So it takes pressure off our system. Um, it also helps with our environmental licence that we reuse the water more responsibly. So it, Class A to me is a great community outcome right across the board and I hope we do more of it in the future. Um, definitely with our future treatment plan upgrades in our program, we'll definitely look to extend them into, into other towns. Um, but we might mark that up as a release of our, our video um, and maybe just talk through that at the next We've previously brought um, staff in before to talk about how those that treatment works. So there is a there's some good presentations in the space. So yeah, thanks, general manager. If uh, if we could certainly, um, as an outcome from today, uh, recommend that council could uh, work if you could work with the media team uh, to to get a media release about Class A water and the work that's been undertaken at Wandai. I know it's been going on for a long time and working with the sporting groups in the community. It's going to be a tremendous asset for Wandai to have that water available and also get that video out. And if we can get that out across all of Council's media platforms through media releases as well through our website and our social media platforms, it would be great to inform the community about what Class A water is, how it works and the benefit that's going to have for the Wandai community. That would be tremendous. Thanks very much. Councillor Duff. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just on that one, I think that is it the Wandai Soccer Club, they're not going to be able to benefit until they get a pump. Is, is that correct or is there some issue around the Wandai Soccer? Yeah, I'll just, can I take that on notice, uh, Councillor? Um, I, th I think it was just their internal irrigation uh, yeah. from from memory. But, yeah. So, so they're waiting on a grant. Is that right? So that they can actually hook into it. Is that, yeah. Yeah, they had to need an irrigation upgrade from 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 recollection. But I, I, I'd like yeah, to take yeah. it on notice. So I can get back to you. So just on the other one with is that okay, Mr. Mayor? Another. Uh, um, so VP Dam is at eleven point seven percent. I'm just wondering, um, with that particular level, where does what's the position with the irrigators? Do they get cut off at a certain level? Um, how are we managing the fact that you know if we don't get any more rain, it's going to get back down to to a situation where we've got you know starting to worry about that particular dam? So just wondering, is there, what, what's your thoughts around moving forward with um, you know uh, mitigating if we don't get any more, more follow up rain? Yeah. So three, Mr. Mayor, our advice at the moment from some water is that the medium priorities do have an allocation on that dam, which is, it's only a small allocation. Um, obviously, what we would wait to see is early in the new year, we, we continue to talk with some water across all of the catchments to see what they've done. Um, I think everyone's hopeful that there's, there's going to be an inflow with the, with the La Nina. Um, it is very much a, a, um, a suck it and see approach through the summer. Um, obviously, we'll be keen to um, continue with our, with our drought planning from our end. We'd like to know what's going on with the dams, particularly with some water. Uh, we had a conversation with DNRME yesterday. We would, will continue to um, bring our drought plans um, forward um, and know what that looks like. So from our point of view, we continue to talk with some water around what, their, what they believe is the allocations will be. Um, obviously, the dam went quite low early in the year. Um, I often say this to, to to people that dams never drop the same in the same way. It's like it's like losing weight. It it just happens in different ways. We're seeing acceleration of the BP dam drop, which is not not as in line with what it was previously. Um, so we'll continue to monitor and, and come back to council as we need to. Um, I think don't quote me on it, but I believe the median priorities have got six percent allocation. So six percent. He's on. Just for um, feedback too from the most recent rain, both the weirs on B, the feed into BP have fallen topping and BP is sitting at 12.01 as we speak today. So it picked up about half a percent out of the rain last week. The good thing about it is Benduma had a oh, 0.4 of a flow too. So the good thing that that um, indicates is that the streams feeding them are full. 
So if we can, fingers crossed and prayers, if we can get another another week like we had, uh, that'll start to run. Yeah, thanks, Mr. CEO. Um, well, just to, just extending this conversation, um, the uh, and it's good to see we're getting some rainfall, and hopefully the rain will solve this problem in the short term. Um, but for the benefit of councillors and the media and the community, um, we we do have a uh, urban water supply issue in Kingaroy that impacts on households, and it also impacts on uh, industrial users processing uh, plants in Kingaroy. Um, council has been working very cooperatively. Uh, and very, you know, we must thank the Department um, of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy uh, through uh, the Jacobs Water Study as well as the, um, the, the Regional Water Study for Kingaroy that's been undertaken. Um, and, and of course, the, um, the initial business case for Jacobs was released some months ago. And in recent times, the Minister released the Regional Water Study report for Kingaroy. And what that highlights is that uh, when uh, Gordon Brook Dam, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll turn to our um, staff shortly to clarify this, when Gordon Brook Dam gets below 50%, it becomes very, very challenging for us to use that water because of the treatment required um, around that. And we'll get some more details on this shortly. Um, but we do have an issue with Kingaroy's water supply. I have brought this up before. Um, we are continuing to advocate. We have met with the Minister, uh, former Minister Lynham, on this matter. Uh, and Council will continue to work with our staff, we'll continue to work with the department, we'll continue to work with um, the minister, the new minister, on uh, getting a, a medium-term solution on this. Now, the solution really uh, swings off uh, allocation off Boonderma. As I pointed out before, we have 1,825 megalitres on that pipeline. Now, we know that that is a pipeline that is critical to the operations of Stanwell, which is a very, very important piece of infrastructure for energy supply to uh, the state of Queensland. So it involves a number of stakeholders. Uh, it, isn't a, and it is a little bit complex, but uh, just rest assured, Council is doing everything we can at this point in time to negotiate an arrangement whereby we can access uh, potentially further allocation off Boonderma. Uh, our staff have a very comprehensive plan uh, in relation to uh, possibly building an off-site storage facility where we can then pump and hold water in a much cleaner, more treatable environment. And that would then enable us to uh, have much less reliance on Gordon Brook, uh, where we have cases where it drops below 50%. Now, uh, that being the case, um, you know that'll require funding. It will require some regulatory changes uh, in government. Uh, so we'll continue to work on that once the new minister is appointed. But it is a, it is an issue for council. It's one we're aware of, and it's one we're working on. Um, and also, you know, we have made it, uh, uh, also aware that uh, you know with that comes some water quality issues for the community that we're also aware of and we're working on. So just wanted everyone to be aware of that. That's the body of work that's being undertaken, um, and uh, and we'll continue to progress this matter as one of the key priorities. For council moving forward. If I could just um, uh, perhaps ask for a little bit of an overview, if we can, or happy for this to be taken on notice. Uh, THMs, trihalomethanes, uh, can be a bit of a public health issue. Uh, overall, we, we, we do test extensively for that and other elements in our water. And if I could just ask General Manager Meehan, just uh, to give us an overview of the testing regime around that and, uh, and where we're at with um, recent quality, water quality results on THMs, particularly for Kingaroy uh, Town Water Supply. Thank you. Yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, probably just in relation to uh, the THM. So it, it's obviously um, an issue for us now with Gordon Brook, and I'll, I'll make no bones about that with Council. Uh, if we were to lose access to the Boondema pipeline with Gordon Brook with its current level and its water quality, uh, we would expect that, that we would have, a, have an issue or possible issue that we may not be able to treat that water to Australian drinking water uh, guidelines. Um, that's been publicly released, obviously, um, in recent weeks. We continue to work with the department around solving that issue. Um, it does relate primarily to, to water security um, in increasing our allocation from Boondooma Dam uh, to mitigate water quality issues uh, with that. It's a, it's a complex problem, but uh, Tim and I met with the department yesterday uh, to continue those discussions uh, directly um, and we'll be bringing back further information for council to consider on its way forward. Um, just in relation to THMs, um, so we're talking about um, 
uh, trihalomethanes. It's a marker that's in the water. Uh, Tim's probably more of an expert than I am, but I'll, I'll give the, the lay version if that's okay. Um, it's a marker that we use parts per million um, to indicate how much uh, retention's in the water of, of chemical and, and those sort of things. Uh, there is a drinking water standard guideline that we use, uh, which is 250 parts. Um, it can be, uh, once it exceeds certain levels, it can, can, be, can be harmful um, or have associated health issues. Tim and his team um, test uh, regularly through the network for that. There has been some instances where we do see an exceedance. Um, the first point of call is obviously to flush the network and, and, um, and transfer more water through the network, which is, which is standard. Um, so Tim and his team regularly test the network and make sure that we, um, where we see a high THM, we, we flush that network through to, to, put, to put water through there. Um, it can relate to water being in the network for too long in reservoirs as well, uh, which is high retention, which is caused by age. So generally what we see is um, you know, our issue is caused by uh, higher bromide content in, in our water um, and also organics as well. So um, it's an ongoing issue with surface water in, in, in a lot of catchments, um, but we generally um, we, we, um, make sure that we keep a, a regular testing on the network as per our requirements. So just to give people assurance, the testing for the network is done um, in accordance with the guidelines, and we report that those um, those tests to Queensland Health um, as per the regulation. So we are regulated in this space, um, and his Tim and his team make sure they maintain compliance with that. If we were to see continual high THM contents in part of the network, then obviously we have we would be required to um, give some notice or, or take a different quarter course of action in relation to that in accordance with the guidelines. So. Thanks, okay? General Manager. Tim, did you want to add anything around THMs and uh, where we're at with Gordon Rook? Yeah, um, with the uh, with the THMs, it's it's uh, as General Manager said, it's it's it is quite complex. Um, one of the one of the um, the major driving factors is is uh, in our storage reservoirs. That's where we generally find the THM issues. Now, the reason, and that's at the extreme. Uh, outer limits of our networks because the water it doesn't get turned over as much. So it's it's one of those things. If we don't use it, we actually have to uh, increase or, or trim dose our chlorine. Every time you put an, another bit of chlorine in there, you create the THMs. Uh, so sometimes, so so what we do operationally is once the um, we get a result that is exceeding the 250 parts per million. We actually we will we'll, we'll drop might drop a quarter of the reservoir. Now it sounds like a waste of water, but it brings the, the results back down. Uh, that's the immediate fix. Um, unfortunately, there is uh, for organics um, THMs. We can treat that with uh, potassium permanganate issues. Uh, that's that's not our driving issue for uh, Gordon Brook. It is the brome forms that is our problem. The only solution to that type of problem is reverse osmosis plants, which are very, very expensive to run, very expensive to build, and very land consuming for your evaporation ponds. And and yes, and and the other very important one is is the loss of yield out of for for the water quality for Gordon Brook, for example, you would probably lose thirty to forty percent of your actual source water as wastewater because it's Pretty crook water at uh, at uh, fifty uh, at fifty percent and below. It's uh, a very high concentrate of of, of uh, chemicals. Thanks very much, Tim. That's excellent. And uh, just again to reiterate, the council knows this is a big issue for the Kingaroy community. We'll keep working on it. Um, we uh, we certainly can't afford that Boondooma line to go down for whatever reason, or we will have some significant issues around security of water supply for Kingaroy. Um, so thank you very much for that report. Um, right, uh, Councillor Henshin's been waiting patiently. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to bring to attention to the other councillors and, and public, uh, the, the water, we've had some fantastic rain in the last 10 days. Now the tributaries, rivers and creeks that run to Bendurma Dam, and I cross six of them every day. And two of those creeks, uh, the iron pot and the bow yard had a fresh in them of quite substantial proportion, which was wonderful. In, in my neck of the woods, there was 160 mil of rain. The Stewart River, the Boyne River, 
the Jama, the, uh, the Boyne, absolutely no water in the headwaters of those rivers whatsoever. Now I've spoken to the locals out in the Bandumba area and the landowners there, it took that water 24 hours longer to get down to their properties. When it got there it was 0.8 of a metre, which is wonderful, and there's some water going in, so it'll be interesting in the coming days and weeks as to what Bandumba does, but there will be a false sense of security that we've had wonderful rain, but the amount of water that's heading that way when there's nothing behind it in the headwaters and there's nothing in those other rivers and creeks, it's really quite minimal as what's happened and what's gone down there. It's very interesting to me, as you know, I'm rural and I watch that and I cross that every day. So I'm happy to, and I have many conversations with the people far and wide from the Great Dividing Range in the Bunya Mountains to the Ndumba Dam and keep an eye on those tributaries, rivers and creeks. There were some good localised flooding and, and minor creeks and tributaries out in the Braguda area where they measured some 60 and 80 mil of rain in some falls in some days. That's wonderful, but it's very short-lived um, and there's not the water that people think happens when these storms occur. So if we can get some follow-up rain, but we desperately need water in the in the headwaters of these rivers and creeks coming off that Great Dividing Range and that Bunya Mountain um, area. So hopefully this weekend they're predicting a little bit more rain, but um, we've had a start and it doesn't take much once you get a start to run some water. So that's just what's happening out there with the main rivers and creeks that run towards the Bandumba. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Councillor Henshin. That's information we don't often get in the public uh, arena, so it's nice to get have you on the ground watching the creeks and the rivers flows, keeping our community updated. Thanks very much. Councillor Shoemaker. Thank you. Yes, it's very great to see some rain, and I certainly agree with Councillor Henshin's comments. I certainly hope we see more, but minus the hailstones, certainly that was quite scary over the weekend, and I know that had um, differing impacts across our region, so more rain, less hail, please. Um, just in relation to some of the discussion we had, I just had a couple of questions. Um, just in terms of the spillway design for Gordon Brook Dam, does that include the work that we're talking about in terms of progressing the off-site storage um, to certainly deal with some of the challenges for Kingaroy's uh, water supply? And if not, what are we doing or what work has been done in that space? Because I'm mindful that whilst we're talking about the need for this, we really need that project plan so that we can get some funding in that space. Um, my other question is just with regard to BP Dam, uh, listening to Councillor Duff, and certainly it's great to see that we did have some inflows, but nowhere near enough. Um, just being at that level and certainly the discussions around Kingaroy's town water supply, which I know are not unique, um, are there some any issues with water quality in that area that we need to be mindful of um, for urban supply and use? And my last question is just in terms of listening to some of your um, comments, Tim, and certainly recognise your knowledge in this area. Um, you mentioned that the water's not turned over in the reservoir um, at Gordon Brook Dam and how that can be a challenge. Um, it, it certainly encourages, when you add the chlorine, it creates those trihalomethanes um, and creates more operational challenges. So I was just wondering, you know, have we looked at ways I've seen in um, previous work that I've done, you know, ways in which we aerate the water or try to turn it over to reduce that, um, just thinking what might be cost-effective support or solution. So just keen to understand if there's been any work in that space based on what we know at this point in time. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Shoemaker. Shoemaker, hand over to the General Manager to address those questions. Yep. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'll answer a couple and Tim will answer a couple if that's okay. Um, so just in relation to the spillway, the spillway design is in relation to the, um, the AFC upgrade required um, by under the regulations. So Gordon Rook is a regulated dam. So I think I've previously sent a fact sheet to Council, but I'm happy to redistribute um, uh, around that project. So what that means is we actually have to upgrade for a one in 10,000 event. So you see this right across the state. Um, I think it's by 2025, Tim. 2025. Yeah, we have to be at 75% capacity. Um, you've seen previous stuff on Paradise, Fairbairn and those ones. So it's an actual upgrade to, to make sure that the spillway can withstand a, a high level flood event. Um, currently that project involves 
um, getting a detailed design together so the council can be better understood about what that project is actually worth. It is in your forward borrowing program at a nominal value, but um, the idea of this year is actually bring it up to detail so we can actually work out what we need to do there. Um, in relation to the offsite storage for the Boondooma work, um, we are probably three quarters of the way through the design for that now. So we expect that we'll be finished by uh, probably close to, hopefully by uh, the end of, no, end of November, early December, that we'll actually have a design there. We are looking at 150 meg storage. Uh, we originally looked at 100, but now we've upgraded to 150. We do expect that the Boon Demon pipeline will continue to go down over as it obviously gets older uh, for further maintenance. So we've just made sure we've got additional capacity. We'll bring that project back through council um, in probably December, um, if not earlier, if we can, so that you've got an understanding of that. In relation to the uh, the water quality in the 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 aeration, I'll give that to Tim if that's okay, Councillor. He's uh, yes, yeah, the BP Dem. I'll let Tim answer those ones if that's okay. Uh, yes, uh, just to clarify, uh, when I was talking about the um, THMs in the storages, that's in the actual clear water storage reservoirs in in the towns. So, so um, because chlorine is consumed in the network, uh, when, when you put chlorine at a dose point, it'll actually, uh, say, say you might have five parts per million, just for argument's sake, by the time you get to the outer extremes, it'll be down to one part per million. So it's actually consumed four parts. So what you've had to do is you've, you've got to increase the sterilisation dose to maintain uh, un, uh, safe water. And it's, it's at those points where we do that trim dosing, that's where you create the THMs. So the more times you trim dose it, the higher the THM levels get. Um, so it's actually not the, the, the source. You've got the source there, um, but that's not about the turnover. It's a turnover in the reservoirs in the towns. So it's, it's a, a double-edged sword. If we have um, uh, tight water restrictions, we have less turnover of water, we also get the problem of the THMs. Yes, uh, so with the, the, yeah, that's with the um, uh, residual chlorine in, in the system. So we've, we've got to um, uh, maintain a uh, certain level throughout the system. So you'll, at, at, the, at the centre of town, you may have a higher level on the outer extremes because it gets consumed in, into the pipe networks because you uh, your pipe biofilms and things like that. So we, we actually, um, that's why we test all around our areas. Um, Tabinga Heights is, is uh, one that we generally find our, our THM uh, issues. So that's why we're, we're onto that fairly quick and, and we just drop the levels of the reservoirs to, to maintain. As most most networks have um, uh, THMs, it's just how you manage it, and, and the uh, it, it's unfortunately for South Burnett, the, it's the geology around here that pre presents the bromiforms. Uh, uh, in my previous uh, area uh, over the hill, it uh, we didn't have that issue. We mainly had THM issues with uh, organics, so. It's different, different water qualities. It's everywhere will get it, but not as frequently as what Gordon Brook does. And that's predominantly because the dam is a very shallow dam. Uh, the evaporation, when, when water evaporates, the concentration of, of all your um, water chemicals increases, obviously. And, and I'm also uh, informed that the THM issues predominantly come to the fore around the, uh, the flooding events around 2013, they're different must have been a different runoff um, into the dam and it's, it's, it's uh, picked it up, yeah. Yeah, thanks very much, Tim. Um, I just, just could be Councillor Shoemaker and uh, Councillor Duff, if you can just hold your microphones a bit closer, speak a little bit louder, we're just having some problem picking you up uh, on the live stream. But Councillor Shoemaker, go ahead. Thank you, Mr Mayor, I'll try to speak up. Um, just in relation, sorry, Thank you, Tim. That's great. Um, my only other question I had was last um, portfolio discussion we had, we talked a little bit around the challenges for the blackbutt avocado growers and the changes from, um, you know, the access of Bandoomba water versus Wyvernhoe. Um, I was just keen to get an update about that too. Yeah, Councillor Schumacher, if I could just all interject there. Um, 
we, uh, I think that's folded into the Jacobs Water Feasibility Study, um, and maybe we could just, if we can just, it's not black butt water, no, okay. I was just wanting to perhaps uh, see if we could get that incorporated into it. Just a quick update on where we're at with that water feasibility study as well. Yeah, three minutes. I'm probably happy to answer both questions. Just in relation in relation to their allocation, um, Tim and and uh, the Division on Portfolio Council will likely be on site next week to to meet with them to to talk through some of those issues. So, um, I think it's probably important that we uh, get an understanding of consumption and those things and talk directly with them as a as a group to to see what their needs are and some of the challenges around that. So that'll that'll go forward to, to get resolved through the portfolio. Um, just in relation to the Jacobs report, Mr. Mayor, so um, I believe I've got the signed copy behind me now, um, which is um, basically council will be putting forward a proposal uh, to the state and the Australian governments under the NWIDF uh, program um, to continue the scope uh, post the options analysis to, to target um, an economic development plan for the South Net in relation to water um, and also to go after key projects around um, an integrated water scheme um, with Kingaroy and Gordonbrook around, you know, increasing our allocations for um, commercial and agricultural growth as long as, uh, in addition to um, possibly using uh, the Gordon Brook Dam for agricultural purposes um, over the longer term. And also we put money aside there obviously to um, uh, to target uh, future works for Barley or Weir to, to bring that forward um, and get that project into a higher state of readiness so that um, between uh, the irrigator groups in Baida who have been a great supporter with us in that project uh, to try and enable them to, to get that uh, project to further stages where they may be able to make a submission for um, for a government assistance. And the last one is to look at, um, obviously, uh, the Black Butt uh, Irrigation Group, uh, to look at how we may be able to enable them into, into growing their business um, if future allocations were to occur and what that may look like. So very much targeting, enabling industries, um, what they need even beyond water, so what actually is required to, to enable those businesses to go forward. So that'll be submitted to the government um, for their consideration. Um, it's obviously subject to approval, uh, but um, we've had great support from DNRME and Jacobs to, to try and bring that those projects uh, further ahead, so we'll make a submission with that. Yeah, thanks, General Manager. So of course, a um, bit of background for those that don't know, uh, um, the uh, former Mayor Campbell did a lot of work and uh, we've got to obviously acknowledge that uh, if it wasn't for him and his work, we wouldn't be in a position today where we had $2 million in conjunction with North Burnett to undertake a water feasibility study. Uh, and out of that, as General Manager Meehan has um, indicated, we've now had the second stage, the options analysis going through uh, the state and federal departments. Um, and for Council, uh, out of that, we're hoping to be able to progress an economic roadmap for our region. Uh, which uh, obviously uh, centres around water uh, supply. Uh, Barley or Weir is on the agenda and will be con continue to be pursued uh, in conjunct by council in conjunction with Baido and the, and the irrigators group in that part of the world um, uh, and through state and federal uh, government. Uh, Kingaroy uh, integrated water scheme, uh, obviously that involves, as we've said, um, how we're looking at you know the potential to access more water off Boonderma, uh, build a, a off-site storage facility, uh, then take the reliance off Gordonbrook and potentially free up water at Gordonbrook for irrigators to use for improved agricultural production on those high value crops around that area. In addition to that, part of that strategy also includes the recycling facility at Swickers. Uh, Council will continue to work on that with uh, Swickers and the government, and of course the Blackbutt irrigators uh, and working with uh, options to bring water from southern parts, as you've indicated, Councillor Shoemaker, um, along that Wyvernhoe line and how we can perhaps get greater uh, water access there because we know there is massive potential to grow the avocado production uh, in in that uh, Mount Binga Blackbutt area. So that they're critical projects for the benefit of the community and the media. Uh, Council will continue uh, to uh, progress those projects uh, and continue to work cooperatively with uh, the Department of Natural Resources and keep everyone informed as that uh, work continues. Did anyone have any questions, further questions in relation to the Jacobs Water Study specifically? Yep, thanks, Councillor Duff. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just um, want to know, is the water study complete? 
have we finished totally the consultation process? And if it has been complete, is it going to be tabled as a document to be ratified by council and then the recommendations out of that study endorsed and then progressed accordingly? That's um, just one, that's all I'd like to know. Thank you. Yeah, through Mr. Mayor, uh, to answer your question that the study is complete um, in, the, in the stage of the scope that was, was delivered. Um, it won't be brought to council for endorsement. The study actually belongs to the, the Australian government and the um, and in partnership with the state. So council um, will sign the study off through its delegate, the mayor, um, to, to have that released. Um, what will happen in the coming weeks is that it will go back for review by the Australian government and then obviously it will go through um, DNRME for official for official release. Um, the recommendations that we've put through have been signed off by the, the mayor to ask for that additional staging of the NWD idea, the NWIDF program to bring that additional money in, which is the remaining money from the original allocation for the study. Any other recommendations um, would have to be, yeah, that they have to go through the steering group, which is set up through the program and under the terms of reference of the program. If that makes sense. That's excellent. Thanks, General Manager. Uh, okay, well, uh, if everyone's comfortable with that. Councillor Schumacher, are you comfortable? I think I sort of probably took us a bit off track there away from that black butt um, recycled water. Did you want to, any further questions on that? Sorry. Yes, yes Mr Mayor. Sorry, um, you were absent from the last portfolio discussion. So, yeah, I was really keen to understand um, more about the discussion we'd had in which, you know, Bandoomba black butts. Um, usage of Mandoomba water was actually extremely high and we were trying to work with the irrigators um, to really understand how we can continue to support that industry in the area but also make sure we can secure residential water for, um, for Blackbutt itself. So please correct me if I've got any of that wrong but I'm, I'm very mindful of the role in which the Blackbutt avocado industry plays um, in our region. Yeah, through Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, Tim and his team will work with them through that. Obviously, the consumption is high. We will exceed our allocation in Blackbutt, um, no doubt. But Tim will um, um, obviously commence discussions between the schemes to, to um, come up with a solution there. Mr. Mayor, just, I just wanted to make one comment, before, if I may, before uh, before we close up. Council may not be aware. Um, we, we talk about the road staff going out through the storms and, and cleaning up at short notice, uh, which is fantastic. And, um, we really do appreciate the work that our staff do. Just so councillors are aware, our water and sewage contingent um, work a lot on weekends, particularly through storms. Um, you may not be aware that the Gordon Brook treatment plant was actually um, suffered significant lightning strikes um, on, on Saturday afternoon, where the, the plant actually went down with a number of instruments because it's uh, they're, they're very computerised now. Um, Tim and his team scrambled all weekend to bring that plant back online manually uh, to make sure that the water supply continued on. Um, it's one of those things no one notices until the water stops. Um, the, the amount of work that they've done on the weekend um, to make sure that these plants are ready and the responding that they do, they, they, they really do scramble at all hours of the night. I think they went right through the night to bring the plant back operational so um, to make sure the water's there. So I just wanted council to be aware and just acknowledge the work that um, all of our teams, and, and I really appreciate the councillors' comments before about our roads team. I spoke with some of those staff on Sunday. Uh, they were out again Sunday night. They were, uh, Saturday night they were out in the bunyas and those sort of things where we didn't think we had weather events, but locally they did. So they do do a tremendous job. But um, I just want council to, and the community to be aware that the work that the staff, again, it's not us that do that work. It is our frontline people. Um, we ask them to go out and they put their hand up every time and, and they do really make sure that, you know, we services uh, are safe. Um, and we continue to provide them at all hours. Thanks very much, General Manager. And can I just ask in response to that, um, request that, uh, make a mayoral request that uh, you and your staff could work with, uh, with our media and comms team uh, to put together a media release and some information out in the community on our social media platforms about the work that had happened over the weekend, uh, the lightning strike at the Gordon Brook treatment plant, uh, and, the, and maybe we've got some photos or a bit of a story about that and the work that was undertaken by the staff uh, working overnight through the night to get that back up for us. I live in King Arana, didn't notice any water go out, so great work. Um, and also, uh, if we can put together a story around the work that our roads crews have been doing after hours in responding to storm damage. I think it's really important that we share that with the community so that they understand. Uh, we don't often see, I wasn't even aware that we had roads crews out working in the dark 
uh, to get the roads uh, trafficable again and that we had people out there working overnight at the treatment plant to keep our water up. So would really like to see some media releases and some uh, community media go out around that uh, on our social media platforms and would encourage the media here if you have further questions about any of that uh, to certainly contact uh, the office of the mayor uh, and our media comms and we'll get you some details around that if you'd like to run stories. That would be much appreciated. Uh, Councillor Jones. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just uh, briefly want to touch on, um, you mentioned the uh, importance of uh, blackbutt avocados and uh, the likes down there. I just want to add, we now have a uh, significant um, investment in strawberries, uh, of all things, and uh, blackbutt's diversifying right across, uh, as, as our whole region are, like stone fruit, debosia and all that sort of stuff. It used to be crops and peanuts and beef, so we've gotten a lot of other stuff. So there's a major... Uh, major investment in uh, strawberries and the uh, the production of runners in that area which will rely heavily on the uh, water supply and uh, the Boondoomba and the Wyvernoe pipelines all that sort of stuff that we've mentioned that goes right back to 1983 when uh, contracts were drawn up and the uh, some of the avocado growers and all that down there contributed to that scheme so it is very important that we uh, work as our staff are doing and our previous mayor and previous council and all that sort of stuff. And I'm glad you acknowledged uh, Mayor Campbell's efforts because he was very passionate about the uh, water problem in the South Burnett. But our staff has certainly taken up Tim and uh, Aaron and everybody else. So it is imperative. Black Buddy is a uh, very significant uh, contributor to our uh, overall uh, economy in the South Burnett region and Queensland. So, um, yeah, I... Uh, I appreciate the comments that uh, other councillors have, uh, have uh, raised this morning and uh, glad to see their support for it. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Councillor Schumacher. Yes, thank you, Councillor Jones. I absolutely agree. Really critical um, to our region's prosperity and to the future, uh, definitely. Um, I just wanted to more of a question probably through you, Mr Mayor, through CEO Mark. I certainly recognise, you know, the efforts and, and the the work of our staff, particularly when going out at night time, leaving their families and things at home during some pretty um, torrential weather. So I just, through you, Mr CEO, I just wanted to ask what the process is to acknowledge staff who go above and beyond. I know in previous, um, you know, and those particular staff members in my previous employment history, you know, there have been processes where we've put those names up in lights in, in staff communications or, um, you know, issued um, letters of thanks or kudos or something along those lines. I'm just really interested to understand that process because certainly from a cultural point of view, I recognise how important the culture here at Council is and how important it is to really acknowledge those who go above and beyond. Very happy to because we've done massive amount of work over this in the last two years. Uh, staff newsletters, all the feedback that comes in. Actually, I will go back to my point that I've said to you guys a dozen times. The, it's not only the frontline guys. There's after-hour services. There's a whole organisation that swings in behind. And if I may, without being too bit cheeky, uh, that's what you pay us for is to manage these processes and get the fellows out. I mean, uh, I know uh, all the general managers, myself, we keep the phones, we take home the computers, uh, the media, Tracy, even though she was um, away for the weekend, she had the gear with her. So it is, it's lovely to hear and like, and I'm absolutely second, the frontline guys get out there and, and they just do a magnificent job. But the really good thing about with our disaster recovery and particularly our response is it's a whole of an organisation and I'm just so proud of the way I've said again, and we'll yell to the rooftops about how the organisation responded to COVID this is becoming actually like normal business and it becomes almost easy to miss it because the guys do respond so well uh, and they get out there. As far as uh, the cultural stuff, culture is very high and uh, to coin the old phrase, structure follows strategy and culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, so we've spent a lot of time uh, over the last two years, staff, as I said, staff news others, the certificates uh, for the recognition of years of service, the acknowledgements for staff meetings, the divisional meetings, the face-to-face, -face. letters of acknowledgement. Um, yes, there are, but they're probably uh, the lesser of much more face-to-face -face and public, uh, well, amongst their peers, recognition of what they're doing. 
I could probably prattle on for ages, but I won't. But it is very high on our on our list, and it's been something not only that has been worked on for the last, as I'm repeating myself now, for the last two years, but will continue to go on. And if I may say so, um, the culture of this place two and a half years ago to what it is now is getting significantly different. Thanks, Mr. Sow, and I can certainly um, disclose that uh, Mr. CEO, CEO and myself have had significant conversations about where the council was at two and a half years ago. Uh, in his term, in the two years that he's been here, has made significant developments in terms of that cultural shift that we're now seeing in terms of customer service standards. We have a customer service charter that's currently in, in a work in progress in council, and that's part of that process. Um, but we understand that there is a lot more work to do in building a, a really, really strong and robust customer service uh, focus right across the council. Uh, we have some really high pockets of highlights and we'd like to see that emanate right throughout the organisation. Uh, so I would say to people, watch this space. You're going to see some wonderful work happen in this under CEO Mark's leadership uh, with the support of the senior executives. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Jones, I'm just about to move on to close the meeting. Yeah. Uh, so I'll ask you to be very quick because I've got one last question in, in terms of the Nango's uh, water uh, sewerage treatment. So have you got a relevant question and will you be quick? I Please do go ahead. I do believe so, Mr Mayor. You keep, you keep feeding me bloody opportunity to uh, say things. I'm trying to sit here and say nothing. But anyway, what I want to say is we'll probably get accused again today for in this council chamber of sitting in here back slapping and all that sort of stuff and look at them all congratulating each other. It's a fact that um, it's a good opportunity now for these live stream meetings to go out for people to understand that we do cop a lot of negative stuff and we have to put up with it and we have to deal with it. Now staff, the frontline people out there, men and women, that they cop all the abuse and all that sort of stuff, we go out in the general public, deal with it. We, I've got to say that I'm getting a lot more positive comments than what I was two years ago, three years ago on the road, so that's all good. But I just want to defend the council and the councillors and everybody here today that said good things about staff members or fellow councillors or whatever. It's, it's about understanding that there is a lot of positive, good stuff that's going on in this council. And the negative publicity, the negative media, whatever we get, it's just a little bit of a chance for councillors to stand up and give recognition to the people that deserve it the most. And that's what it's about. It's not about backslapping and all that. It's about appreciating the staff and the people that work in this organisation that are doing a high job trying to deliver a good service level to the people that pay our wages in their rates. I just wanted to make that quite clear. <clears throat> Got it. Thanks, uh, Councillor Jones. Make a couple of points here. First, Councillor Schumacher, that's a, a really good question, and thanks, um, CEO Mark, for responding. Uh, we'll continue to work um, with our people and culture team to make sure that our staff, when it's appropriate, are duly recognised and put in place, you know, even more processes for that to happen. Um, important for the community to understand that where we have staff performance issues. Uh, I can assure you that our CEO and our general manager respond very quickly to those. It's not always about backslapping and giving people a, a pat on the back, I suppose. We do also deal with performance issues very seriously in this organisation. We understand we can do better in terms of customer service and we were work, we're working hard to improve those standards. Uh, it is a work in progress, but it is also important for anyone that's watching or listening or in this chamber to understand that we're all human beings, our staff are people. And my experience in business is that uh, a pat on the back goes a long way in terms of uplifting people to continue to perform at a high standard. If we continue to only pick on problems and people doing the wrong thing, then that's not going to build the strong culture that we want. So it is important, I support Councillor Jones, that in these forums and wherever we have the opportunity, just like anyone else in the workplace, our staff need um, positive recognition, positive feedback, uh, some positive affirmation from time to time. That's all part of building that strong, positive culture. And maybe those who aren't w working to those standards will see those others getting recognition and go, well, okay, I might like to get that recognition, so I'll jump on board and do a little bit extra myself. Uh, so I think that is an important part of building a strong culture, and I hope the community can recognise and see that. Now, moving on, uh, thanks, Councillor Jones, for being very quick. Uh, so the sewer relining program has been mentioned in your report, Councillor Froloff from the Nango. If we can, we want to wrap up within five minutes. 
General Manager, can you just give us a quick overview of, number one, why we had to do the pipe bursting, number two, how much we've spent on the Nanango uh, sewerage line, and number three, where those funds have come from. Can we get that quickly in a couple of short paragraphs? I'll take it on notice with the values, Mr Mayor, if that's okay, but I'll get to him to explain the project in, in, in the process there. Um, I'll just, in line with where the funding has come from, what we did, um, it was early in your in the new council's term, was we brought money forward to um, make sure that we undertook that work in a timely manner and we continue to plan for further works inside that budget. We actually brought forward reserves um, in advance of this year's budget um, to make sure that we got that work undertaken urgently. I might just get Tim to give an overview of the of the works, if that's okay. Um, yeah, thanks, Aaron. Yeah. I don't, we don't want an exhaustive, detailed no. technical analysis. We, just, just a quick couple of quick couple of lines to be fine. Thanks. Yeah, Tim. it's interesting that your questions there. One of the things that we we actually enjoying about the standing committees is that we actually have a frozen infrastructure series go. We have a whole range of stuff that we would happily take people through publicly, and you know what we do in the field. And I think council enjoyed their their visit to the pipe bursting. The other day to actually see what what happens on the ground but i'll hand it to him for an overview if that's okay thanks mr mayor um yeah so so the reason uh we had to go to pipe burst and traditionally we do uh structural sewer relining um so about 12 months ago we did cctv we, you traditionally you you clean the pipe sewers you do the cctv and then you determine your uh relining program so that was put that, that particular pipeline was put on the relining program. The contract was awarded to the to the tenderer. And so that what they do, they go along and they clean the pipeline again, do the run their CCTV through and say, yeah, I can go and do that. In in as little as six months after the previous CCTV, the gas attack, um, because sewer sewer systems produce gas and and um so the gas attack actually eats, it's, it's, uh, they were concrete pipes. It actually ate the concrete, top of the, uh, the concrete pipe in six months. Um, so the, uh, the, there's not many products that can actually reline through with, it hadn't collapsed, but it was close on it. So the solution was to pipe burst. And a pipe burst means that it maintains the invert level of the existing pipe. And you can push it, pull it through. Um, even if it does collapse, you'll generally be able to get it through. So that was why the pipe bursting was selected in that instance. Um, traditionally, like I say, uh, structural relines uh, are the way to go. And um, uh, but yeah, this instance required something to be done very urgent. And uh, if it had gone down, we were in a whole heap of strife. Thanks very much, Tim. And I could, I could just, uh, I suppose, summarise there that that. What we've got a situation here where council had had all of its due diligence with CCTV. We thought the pipeline was fine, but beyond our control, there was this external problem um, with the with the corrosion of the concrete. And it, uh, fortunately, through good financial management, council had the cash reserves available with the money in the bank to be able to respond quickly. Um, and we used state of the art technology with pipe bursting to get that done. So we often get criticised in council. Um, because people see the superficial things that maybe aren't done, don't realise there's a, underneath the ground, there's a lot of work that council does. And the sewerage lines are a classic example of that. And so this is a case of where council had set money aside for this, was able to respond very quickly. If we hadn't have responded and done the pipe bursting that, we, uh, that was planned, my understanding is it would have cost us a lot more money to keep that sewerage line serviced than an ango. So well done. Thanks very much, team. Yeah, no, Mr. Mayor, I just, I just say um, the, the overview of that project. It just goes to show the, the benefit of putting critical asset management systems in place. We talk about our roads, we talk about our, our sewage services, and those critical services. Um, I think that's a credit to Tim and, and his team, and also uh, James, uh, who's sitting behind me. Uh, very quiet today. He's at the back of standing committee, but he does a lot of work behind the scenes with his team. Um, the fact that they they go through and assess the infrastructure that allows these programs to get and put in place. This, um, you know, is a is a real way forward for our council, ensuring we get consistent services and and get ourselves towards sustainability. So, um, again, we talk about some of the things that have been put in place, and CCTV program is one that wasn't in place previously. And Tim and his team have done that, and that's allowed us to to make good decisions, but also uh, literally um, protect our network and, and go after critical assets.
Thanks very much, uh, General Manager. Well, all now, uh, we don't have anything on item... Uh, I see we've got to finish this one up, sorry. So we're still on item 6.1. We've had a second and a mover on Councillor Frailoff's report. And um, just before we put that to the vote, I just want to also acknowledge Councillor Frailoff. Uh, again, a lot of her work uh, isn't the nice, pretty stuff that, for example, you see me out doing on parks and gardens. Councillor Frailoff works very hard behind the scenes with these, uh, with the technical staff around water... Pipe, you know, pipes for water, uh, pipes for sewerage, treatment plants, uh, a whole range of things that people don't see on the surface because they're not the pretty superficial things. So I know she works very hard. She probably doesn't promote herself and tell people about the work that she's doing. Very much a quiet achiever. So congratulations, Councillor Freyloff. Keep up the great work. And, and to your team there in, in infrastructure as well. So we have... Uh, that at, at hand. So all those in favour that we receive uh, Councillor Fellows' report for information. Thank you. Uh, recommendation has been passed unanimously. Uh, so we have nothing in item seven for confidential, that's for confidential nature under the regulations. So I'll now move to uh, close our first uh, standing committee meeting. Thank you all for your attendance and your patience and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone back here next Wednesday for the exec and communities committee meeting. Thank you all. Meeting closed.